Hey, it's Verity here from the creative team and welcome to the channel. Today's video shows you how easy pattern heat embossing is. Whether you decide to do a full background like I will today, or whether you use a small pattern within your design, it can create a beautiful heat emboss interest to any project. The stamp set I'm using is the Autonew Peace Love Joy stamp set. And for the background, I'm going to use this star insert stamp. Now this is meant to be stamped inside the fuller star stamp, but instead I'm using it as a design element for the background. As I want to emboss the whole background, I find it useful to adhere a makeshift handle to the back of the card panel with some repositionable tape. This will give me something to use to pick up the panel without getting my fingers all over that background. Now I'm just prepping the background with my embossing buddy because knowing me I would have got my fingers somewhere over the panel when I first picked it up. Therefore I won't have to worry that the powder will stick to any finger marks later on. Next I find it easiest to use an acrylic block to repeatedly stamp a background as you don't need to mess about moving the panel within your stamping platform and making sure that the stamp is in the right position. It's a good idea to line your card panel up with the grid lines on your mat and I'm just stamping at the bottom of the panel along the centre. For your background to look more seamless and professional, make sure your pattern goes over the edge. So this will make it look like it's come from a much more larger piece and you've cut it down. Keep stamping the same pattern all the way up the panel and once complete, make sure you go back in and fill in any gaps along the edge. Again, this will help make the panel look much more professional as there will be no obvious gaps. Once complete, I'm covering the panel in silver pearl embossing powder. This has a lovely soft silver colour to it that is not as strong as a regular metallic silver and almost takes on the colour of the card beneath slightly. As I added that makeshift handle, I can easily pick up my panel to apply the powder and then also heat set it. So make sure your heat gun is set to speed 2 and you've allowed it to warm up before you bring it to your panel to melt the powder. It is best to make sure your gun is nice and hot first as this will reduce the time needed to melt the powder and also reduce the chance of the background starting to warp. As you can see the background looks classic and elegant when it's heat set. So to step the background up a notch I'm going to do some emboss resists emboss resist with two Catherine Paula inks. The first ink I'm applying is Aquatini and I'm using a blending tool to apply the ink at the bottom of the card and using a circular motion just bringing the colour up the card two thirds of the way. Next I'm using Daydream ink and applying this once again from the bottom in a circular motion. You may wish to go back between the colours just to smooth the transition out and after the colours were added you will then just want to take a dry cloth and rub this over the top. This is because the embossing will resist the ink and the ink sits on the top of the heat embossing. When you rub it away it brightens up the embossing and it looks cleaner again. For the design elements on this card I'm heat embossing the star from the same stamp set and covering this in bright white opaque embossing powder and heat sit this before fussy cutting the star out. For the sentiment, I've die cut the sugar script banks from Birch Press Designs out three times to layer up for dimension. Now one of my favourite embossing glitters is sea glass and I knew this would pair beautifully with the colour of the card. So to add the embossing glitter, I'm smooshing my clear ultra slow drying embossing pad down into the die cut and then covering the die cut with sea glass embossing glitter. As it's quite a small die cut, I'm using a craft pick to hold it still whilst I melt the powder with my heat gum. Now I repeated this several times to add two to three layers of the embossing glitter. This will give you a smooth and vibrant embossed die cut and the glitter just catches the light and it's stunning. When I placed this onto the card I decided it needed something else to help it stand out from the background. I wanted a pop of coral and I didn't have any coloured cardstock to match so I used my Samba Catherine Paula ink to add colour to a strip of white card before I die cut from it. Then I adhered this to the bottom of the layered sentiment but offset slightly to create a shadow which just helps lift the sentiment out from the busy background. 
I also heat embossed a secondary sentiment onto a matching piece of card and heat embossed this in white again. The sentiment and star were foam mounted onto the card panel. To add a little embellishment to bring out the coral colour more, I added a few jewels from Lucy's cards in a coral colour and adhered these down with Gina K Connect glue. I hope you picked up a couple of tips for creating your own pattern heat embossing, whether you decide to make a full background like this or just add elements of it to your project. It is very easy to do but can create a big impact, so why not give it a go? If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit that bell icon so you'll be notified when the next video is up. If you would like to check out my personal channel, print it to this little button. I've also included a link here as well as down below. Until next time, happy crafting!